Konnichiwa. Welcome to episode 47 of my Worm Unlimited tutorial series. This episode is going to be on combat and uh, in spe specifically melee combat. Um, we're going to be going over the practice style, target to attack system, uh, the combat rating and a few other things that I'm going to throw in. This will not conclude uh, combat. I'm going to make uh, two or three episodes. They'll all be separated and um, covering different items just to try and make it easier for indexing for people in the future that search want to look up a specific part of combat. I shall try to be as far as I can. This is one of them subjects which goes off in all different directions. So I shall try to chip it down into a more palatable form for understanding. Okay, so first of all, before I get started on combat, I just want to announce that Steam's got another 10% sale on for Worm Unlimited at the moment. I want to thank X Blue Bluebly. It's <laughs> a good name, that. I want to thank X Bluebly for uh, leaving a comment announcing that about the Steam sale. So I don't know how long, long it's running for, but if you're on the fence at the moment about Worm, well, there's perhaps a little incentive for you that you can get it a little cheaper. Okay, so here we are at last on the uh, combat episode. Now this first episode is not going to be about me killing a single thing, okay? What we will be doing is training um, some of our sub skills like you'll see we'll train our medium shield a bit, time permitting this is, and we will also train our, not our fighting, our Well, we may be training one of these, um, but like I say, I'm going to segment them up. It's This episode is not going to be about me hitting things, more about them hitting me. And between you and me, the legend, legendary gamester is going down in this episode. Yep, you heard me right. The one and only gamester is going to die. No, don't try, don't try and talk me out of it my fate is sealed. I mean what's the point in being a lunatic if I cannot exercise my right to a little lunacy every now and again. So that's what we shall be getting up to at the end. For now though let's start with the most basic form of combat training which of course will be the practice doll. Now when you start fighting of course these will all be on one. You'll have to forgive me here that uh, some of my skills are a little higher simply because I've been trying to um, prepare for a lever working episode um, which I know, I mean there's so many episodes I want to do. The only restraints, constraints I've had so far is not having the materials to do them. So you'll have to forgive my fighting skills being above one for most of them simply because I've had to uh, kill some balls off to get some um, hides. So there we go. You won't be seeing it starting from scratch. Yours no doubt may be on one. You, you, some of you, yours will be no doubt higher than mine. For those of you though that are starting on one for all of your fighting skills, the combat doll is the way to go. We will, I will be showing you better ways to um, progress your combat skills but for now we are going to do the uh, practice doll. So let's start then by making the practice doll but before that I want to start with a question okay just to make sure that you still all have a pulse and are compass mentis. Okay so the question we are going to make a new um, pen, a new set of pens, animal pens. We're going to make combat pens, okay, specifically for that reason. We're going to make some new pens just for combat. So my question is to you, do you believe 
there should be any special design for the combat pen. Do you believe there should be any modifications to the way we've made our other pens? Okay, so I'll give you the answer at the end of this episode. So there's a question for you to think about. Before we make that combat pen, should it be unique in any way? Right, okay, I've waffled enough. Let's make this doll. So let's bring up the crafting window. Let's bring up the recipes. And you can see I've just typed in PRAC. That brings up the practice doll. Now, as you can see, it's very simple to make. Of course, for us in Worm Unlimited, we will bypass, we will not bypass, we will fast outgrow the practice doll. It, the practice doll, okay, you can use to get your fighting skills to 20. Once they get to 20, the practice doll is redundant. But remember, okay, you can use it also to get your sub skills to 20. That means for the axe, axes for the mauls and for the uh, swords and for the other weapons that I've mentioned you can get them all to 20. There are other, are other ways for the swords for the uh, <clears throat> long sword and the two-handed sword and all of the axes there is another way to get train them to 20 that's through chopping down trees you can train your long, not the short sword, that doesn't, you can't do it with that, but with the long sword, the two handed sword, and all of the axes, you can train them skills to 20 by chopping down trees. Okay, so here's the practice style. This is the method we will use for 20. You'll see you need one large nail, four shafts, one pumpkin, and two planks. Now, if I drop all of these items, into my inventory we can then get started so there's the shafts there's the pumpkin there's the large nail and there's the planks let's now add that to the crafting window okay there's our practice style let's now click create and there we go in our pocket it's put the unfinished practice style so we'll add that to the crafting window and now we need to add these components. What wood should we use? I'm imagining oak, but because we're going to use it in Worm Unlimited, it's going to be so brief because the skills go up so quickly. So having said that, though, of course, you're going to you've got lots of different skills you can use it for. I imagine again oak simply because it's going to take damage with each hit. So for this though I'm not using any special woods I'm just using pine in fact but you know you take your pick you do trial and error make several practice dolls see which one out of which wood damages the slowest let's add the pumpkin first of all okay so there we go let's add our shafts and let's add our planks And there we go. We should now see somewhere a practice. Oh, it's in our pocket. Okay, so let's put that down on the ground. So right click and just drop on ground. And there we go. There's our practice style. <clears throat> now, you will. The first thing you'll want to do before you start practicing is you don't really want your best weapon equipped because you will destroy the practice doll very quickly. They are, if we take a look, it is only 15 quality. So it's not, I mean, the quality, the items I used to make it, okay, the components were low quality. So hence, that's why we got a low quality practice doll. If you have high um, components, high quality components, the shafts and the planks, then use as high as you can and you'll make your practice doll. But I'll get to the worm Peter in a moment so we can get the facts about that. For now though, okay, unequip your good weapon, okay, because I'm hoping you've managed to get yours up to 40, if not near that. And what we're going to equip, remember the other weapon that we can use is a shaft. <clears throat> 
sorry, excuse me. So we're going to equip the shaft. Okay, now we've got the shaft. Now we can fight with the practice style. So let's remove that window and let's show you. I can't actually remember what the. Um, is it clubs? I think I said. No, the belly and pin got the clubs. I, I can't remember what skill it gets up. Let's try anyway. So here we go. We know it's on 15 quality. Let's see how long it lasts. So if we right click on the practice doll, you'll see there's an option to practice. Left click practice. And it tells us we're too far away. OK, let's get a bit closer. I'm going to discuss distances in a little while. Let's try again and practice. You're too far away. Wow, do I have to actually be hugging it? I guess so. Let's try again. There we go. Now, notice you only have to do it right click and practice once and then it will just keep practicing. Now, if we look down here, we can see our our um, fighting skills going up and we also notice that the well it says we're mauling but it doesn't appear with the shaft for any of them no it's not butchering it doesn't appear that any of these weapons are going up so it looks like using the shaft the only skill you'll get we're getting up is our fighting so we can get our fighting though to 20 with this method let's check the damage you see it does take damage quite quickly and the skill is raising also quite quickly in worm online and public servers depending on the speed of the combat that's been set to but for worm online practice dolls are definitely what you're going to be using to get your fighting to 20 you are not going to step out of your deed or off of your safe area until you've got your fighting to a minimum of 20 and even then you still won't be going off into the wilds and fighting many creatures because I will show you why once we've finished here so are we okay here you go you get the gist of it no point in me sitting you here for half an hour watching my fighting skill going up using the shaft okay none of these are going up but if I equip the short sword the tip to fighting with the practice doll, okay, here is a pro tip, use very, very low quality weapons. So you know your starter short sword, which I've dropped on the ground in a pile of rubbish over there, that's what you should be using. Get weapons or create weapons as low quality as you can so create a new sword for example leave it at quality level one and then come and practice on the practice doll and the same applies to more staffs more um, axes all of them create a really low quality weapon then you can train the sub skill for much longer because the way the weapons work the higher the quality level of the weapon the more damage you will do so there we are that's what you want to do if you want to train your sub weapon sub skills get really low quality quality level one to three if you can and train with them right let's finish with the practicing the way we can finish is let's jump on the cart actually no before we do that I'm just seeing if we get the option for yet yeah, no target so if we do that that's it no okay I'll have to walk away from it what I want to do now is read Wormpedia but I don't want clangs going off all the time which they are still doing let's take a trip on my cart to get away from that practice dummy okay so I'm now going to read what it says in the wonderful Wormpedia with regards to the practice doll okay so description an exquisite man-sized practice doll made from shafts a pair of planks and a pumpkin practice doll is a wooden item used for raising your main fighting skill which we've already observed with the fighting using drop the practice doll on the ground after creating it right click and select practice yep we've seen that you must 
have some item in your right hand, either a low quality weapon or a shaft, so that you will not damage the doll too much. Yep, well I've just told you about that. The lower the quality of the item, the less damage you will cause. Therefore, therefore the practice doll will last longer. Note that shafts are two ha two handed weapons. You must remove other weapons and shields in order to wield it. Well, you may have noticed if you was observant that when I equipped the shaft, it automatically unequipped the shield for me. So you just simply have to equip the shaft. You can raise your fighting skill to a maximum of 20 using the dull and up to 20 in any weapon sub skill. So it's talking about the uh, these sub skills here for the weapons. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. To gain more skill points after that, you must fight in real combat. Yes. Try to keep the quality of the dull as high as possible so that you will not damage it as much per hit. You will still get the same amount of skill no matter how much damage you do or do not cause. Remember to repair the doll and your weapon often or they may break. To stop fighting to excuse me, to stop fighting the doll, step away or use your stop key bind if you have one defined. Okay, well I don't, I stepped away. Notes Unlike real combat, sleep bonus gives increased skill gain when using a practice doll. So for you that are playing Worm Online, that's the way to go. Get some sleep bonus, then use your practice doll. Bows cannot be used to train. You cannot practice attacks with bows on practice dolls. You need to use an archery target instead. I will get to bows in another episode, because I first would have to do... Um, Fletching. So, I mean, there's, there's two different skill trees. We'll get to bows. My apologies for those of you that would love to dive in, me to dive in doing an episode on that now, but there are lots. I mean, I haven't even done cooking yet, for goodness sake. I'm still living off of casseroles, and they do get a bit tasteless after a while. So anyway, I'll get to bows, don't worry. And the last note on the practice doll is it does not carry a signature. So there we are. That's the information off of Wormpedia for you on the practice doll. Okay, next then, let's now explain the um, target to attack system. So fighting in Worm uses a fight, fighting uses a target to attack system. With this target to attack system, there are benefits for us to exploit with this for the trained mind and there is also a foolish schoolboy error which you will also make so to, to clarify this okay in worm to attack anything you simply right click on it go to attack and then target it will then put the target in this target window and you will then start fighting that uh, creature. So now I'm not going to attack my balls here because I need them to pull my cart. But that is the way you will attack anything and everything, whether it's on a PvP server, another player, or out in the wilds and a creature. Now if they're aggressive creatures, of course, and you stray too close to them, they will attack you. So if they attack you, it initiates your combat. Now there's two ways you can fight. You can either auto fight, or if you left click on it, it will set it to manually fighting. With manually fighting, you can choose the different types of attacks that you want to do, which when we get to actually fighting, you you will see and I will show you okay my advice though okay is always leave it on auto because there will come a day when you're out adventuring you step away to make a coffee or do something else and some creature will amble up to you an aggressive creature most likely will be a bear because that's what normally happens to me providing you've got your skills up just a little and providing you've left this on auto fight 
Even though you're not here, if that bear attacks you, you will then auto fight back. And with a bit of luck, you'll manage to kill it. Yes, you may take a lot of damage, but hopefully you'll be back in time in order to heal yourself up, which we will get to. So there we are. Now, there are three distances in combat. Okay, which again we will look at um, once I get to a creature and we start doing a little fighting. The three dis distances are melee. That's where you have to get really close to the creature because you're fighting with a weapon that um, is in your hand and it's close combat. So that's the same tile. Next is throwing. Throwing is one to five tiles away. Now, to give you an example of throwing would be like the long spear. That, you'll remember, said you can fight from a distance of two tiles. And the third distance in fighting is archery. That can go up to 20 tiles away. So, you're probably looking at the screen thinking, you aren't even going to see the creature 20 tiles away with all the trees. Very good point. When you you when we get to archery, you'll notice that I don't go to a thick forested area to show you. I will go to an open plain, or I will be showing you from the boat that I mentioned in a previous episode. Okay, so that's the three distances. We will observe the distances when I get to close combat with a creature. Next to mention, multiple targets. When you are wandering around, you may have more than one aggressive creature attack you. Well, in actual fact, not may, you will have more than one creature aggro you. Imagine being on a PvP server and you stroll into uh, an enemy's kingdom. Are the people there going to just stand there and say, oh no, we must, we must play by the rules and let one person attack him at, at, at once? No, of course they're not. They're going to get all their mates, they're going to circle you, and they're all going to attack you. Multiple targets. Here's a couple of facts for multiple targets. Fact one, okay. If you initialize the combat, then your target will be the creature or the person that you right-clicked on and went to attack okay that will be your target if you did not right click on any of the creatures or any of the people and so the creatures all come running up to you and started hitting you the first creature that hit you that will become your target okay so if you had a, a bear a spider and a troll all attack you Whichever creature hit you first, or even missed, whichever creature launched its attack on you first, that is the creature that will be your target. So, the rule with that is, if they're too strong for you, the creatures, you'll obviously run away. Like a, like a chicken. Okay, But if they're free key creatures, and you've got your skills up, and you feel that you can handle them, then you'll obviously go for the weakest one first to dispatch that, then the next weakest, and then move through the aggressive creatures that way. So that's dealing with multiple creatures. Although my advice is it's a long way off before you're going to be any good like that. But the creature that attacked you first will be your target. That's the point I want to make there. The A ATR. Oh, look at that. I'm starting to use acronyms. ATR. Automatic Targeting and Retaliation. <laughs> it does start to sound a bit comical, I might admit. But there we go. That is what it's called. Automatic Targeting and Retaliation. Basically equates to what I just explained to you. Now, if you see... If one day, okay, you stroll up to a creature... And you want to kill it because you need some um, resources you, or you need some meat for cooking. And you see this message. You see a message down in your event window. The message says, you show off some moves. And trust me, you're going to see this message a lot in the future. 
here's what the message means. The message that means that you are attacking but have no target or the target is out of melee range. I trust me when I tell you you are going to see that many times it might be that you turn on your auto attack by accident so you start attacking thin air and you'll notice that message you show off your moves in the future you are going to say to yourself why is it saying you show off your moves what's caused that it's because you've set yourself to auto fight by mistake with a hotkey or you've targeted a creature like I just said and it's too it's out of your melee range right time to get to the golden rule to fighting okay if you want to forget everything I say that's fine but remember this one golden rule to fighting the golden rule to whenever you fight anything in worm always have the higher ground always there are no exceptions to this if you are in combat always place yourself at the higher ground on the higher ground let's say i want to attack these two balls they're attached to the car okay so surely we're the same height no because this is a gradient and the slope is going up so if i activate my shovel you'll see it's 14 slopes up so what we'll do is I will simply turn the car around now the slope is going down now I would kill the balls not that I want to because I need to be able to move in my car so you understand what I'm saying always always fight from the higher ground always fight from your car from on your horse from on your cow from on your ball or any or your wagon always fight from some form of uh, transport if you can because that will also raise you off the ground and put you at an advantage to any creature that you decide you want to fight so there we go okay next in this list of things for me to cover in this first episode on combat is combat rating what is combat rating combat rating is assigned to every single creature in the game and it is also assigned to us now i'm going to switch to the wormpedia to read combat rating it's not a cop out i'm not just trying to make this well I am trying to make it easy on myself for goodness sake but you will understand why because there's a ton of information on combat rating but uh, it's important because um, for example just to quickly give you a snippet from Wormpedia the fastest way to train your combat is to find a creature with a similar combat rating to you okay that is the quickest way to get your combat up now this is specifically aimed to those that are playing worm online where skilling is much much slower okay that is aimed straight to you because if you don't know your creatures you'll be fighting one and it will say for example you step out your fighting skills 10 and you start you want to go fight a troll all of your forget the fact that the troll will kill you in one hit okay let's imagine that you've managed to tie the troll's hands behind his head so you can stand there and have three hits and he's not going to hit you back the only trouble is all of your hits are going to be glancing blows you are barely going to hit him because your combat rating will be too low so let's switch to wormpedia because it's important that you understand combat rating especially if you want to be able to train up your combat skills efficiently and that's what this episode is or episodes are going to be about making you more efficient in combat so okay here's reading from the wonderful wormpedia combat rating is the system in worm which decides how often you miss and get missed in combat it is a numerical value calculated from a variety of factors. A higher combat rating makes you hit your opponent 
more while making your opponent hit you less. So with just there, you can see how, effect, how important combat rating is. The system, reading from Wormpedia. When two players do battle, combat rating is used to decide how large a percentage chance each player has to hit their opponent. Combat rating is a value derived from many variables. It can be affected by the environment. So I've mentioned about the higher ground. First of combat rating system info from Rolf, who of course is the COO, CEO of Code Club AB. So basically this is from the man who created Worm. This is combat rating system information directly from him. First of all, the bonus is applied to something that is called combat rating or in Wormpedia it likes to now abbreviate it to simply CR which stands for combat rating for short in the system. Every creature has one. It is very similar to the concept of levels in other games just that it fluctuates a lot more in Worm. It is the basis for calculating the chance to hit another creature. Players have a base combat rating of 4. So there we go, that's the player's base rate combat rating. It's 4. If the troll I am fighting has a combat rating of 10 and I have a combat rating of 4, I have about 4. So 10 plus 4 chance to hit the troll or 29% every attack. The troll, on the other hand, has 10 slash 14, so it'll hit me 71% of the attacks. Very simplified. There are parry bonuses and covers involved in the specific algorithm. Also, your, fight, your basic fighting skill is added 1 per 10 in skill. So if you have fighting 59, you have a combat rating of 4 plus 5.9 equals 9.9 .9 in base combat rating. Monsters have their type modifying base combat rating. Making champion creatures have maybe double the figure of the standard type. Okay, this is this is not what I want to do. This is going to switch you off if I keep reading statistics like that. What I want to do is just to, to, to skim over it and try and make it just make a little sense. If you have an, an interest in the percentages and more, much more, I have the time has gone. I'm running out of time. I should have stopped. I just want to quickly finish off combat rating. If you have an interest, more deeper interest than what I give you, go to Wormpedia and go to com type in combat rating it will bring up the page for you and you can get deep and dirty with combat rating for now acquiring combat rating every player in worm and every creature has assigned a specific combat rating at all times however it is a large bundle of variables not only determined by your skill but also by your location and your kingdom population. So that's drifting to the public servers and Worm Online. Combat variables to affect your combat rating. Fighting skill. One of the basic ways of acquiring a high combat rating is, of course, to get a high fighting skill. Your fighting skill gives different combat rating depending on whether you are fighting an NPC creature or you're fighting in PvP combat. Okay, normal fighting, fighting subskill. So let's switch over here and show you. So fighting, it just spoke about. The higher you can get that skill, the better your combat rating will be. Next, normal fighting. What is my ch uh, choice of? Because remember, up here, we've got aggressive, defensive, and normal. What is the one that I most often choose? What is my favourite preference? It is normal fighting. Here is why. Okay, going back to Wormpedia. Normal fighting, fighting subskill, max combat rating bonus for normal fighting was raised to 2.5 back in a patch in 2011. So there we go, we got an extra bonus with the normal fighting. 
you'll notice it's on one I've not trained it yet because I wanted to show you it going up so there we go now I've run out of time I'm very very sorry about that I'm gonna quickly though that's the what I read to you there fight by the way fighting skill and normal fighting they're two of the main variables for your combat rating here however is a list of other factors which contribute to the combat rate your combat rating flanking footing height advantage distance to target half faith bonuses from magnon magnon and libilla cool. i was going to tongue type of that oh by the way rainstorm and me we did some um, experimenting with um, f with uh, faith with the gods wow have we got some good episodes coming up on priests and followers i kid you not fantastic episodes coming up anyway continuing on combat bonuses from being near an altar of your dainty ruler bonus appointed assassin executioner or avenger bonus champion bonus focus levels potions boats water riding horses and carts well that's tied to the height advantage remember i've told you all about all of that so there we are let's finish it there i'm very sorry i've gone so much over time it can't be helped with a game this deep i mean seriously i could just be like everyone else and just go wow 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 quickly and cover the subject but that's not the style of this series wherever you are in the world god bless you and keep every last single one of you safe and I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you for joining me in this first episode on combat. I hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.